In this video, I'm gonna show you how I trade cryptocurrency and how I have traded for more than a decade in both the crypto and stock markets. I was actually a professional stockbroker when trading in the stock market. So I'm gonna show you very simply the steps that real traders will go through when setting up their charts and how they can think about news and events that shape their trading. I've boiled it down to 10 simple steps that are easy and repeatable that can be followed each time you come to trade or are looking to do more research in crypto. Find the timestamps for each section in the video description. And if you wanna use the same training systems as me, then check out the links below because you can get deposit bonuses when you sign up. So it's gonna give you, you know, a deposit bonus when you start trading. So first thing you need to do is use candlestick charts. This is absolutely vital. I'm gonna to come to my Bybit to show you this. If you don't have a Bybit account yet, you can get deposit bonuses um, when you sign up, which is like a buffer. So when you deposit some cash on account to trade, they will give you some extra. Um, it's a nice buffer and it's a bonus. Um, so you can check that out by the link below. But first thing, we have to use candlestick charts. It is the only way that traders uh, will look at the markets. So what exactly is a candlestick chart? Uh, very simply, I'm gonna show you. So a candlestick chart, gives us a lot more information. So firstly, if we had a line chart, which plotted um, uh, prices, so that was 100, what you'd have is you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like this, and you'd just have a, a line chart. That tells you absolutely nothing about the trade or anything that's happened. You need a candlestick chart. A candlestick is going to give you an open price, it's going to give you a closed price, and it's going to give you a high and a low. That is done by the wicks like this. Now, if the close is above the open, then what will happen is that you will color this in green to de denote a rise in price. But it tells us so much more. For example, if the candlestick looks like this and it's green, what that's telling us is that during a time period, because a candlestick is a time period, sellers came in and forced the price all the way down here. But during that same uh, time period, buyers came in and pushed the price all the way back here. And it actually ended because remember, this is the close, which is above the open, which is why it's green. The candlestick during that time period finished much higher. This tells me that during that time period, buyers came in, sellers ran out of gas, buyers are pushing the price up. Why this is important, is because each candlestick closes and trade doesn't stop, but the candlestick does. If trade continues in the same way that it did right here, then in the next candlestick, I could suggest that that candlestick may also be green. That means the price will go up during that candlestick. If I can predict this, then that means I can enter at the new candlestick and ride that price movement up. You can see that right here, what happened. The price was forced down, Buyers came in and forced the price up and what happened in the next two candlesticks. So you absolutely need candlesticks. You can come to a charting software like in Bybit, come over here, uh, area, absolutely no information whatsoever. Candles, yes, hollow candles are fine. Bars are the same thing, just a little bit of a different design. Candles give you lots of information so you can learn more about them um, in some of my other videos, but candlesticks is absolutely vital and it's the number one thing you should use. The next thing we can do is use moving averages very simply to find different areas of value. And it's gonna tell us a lot about where the trade is and where the price is in comparison to before. The way I like to do things is using three moving averages, a 20, a 50, and a, and a 100. What this means is it's gonna take a moving average of the price over a certain uh, range of dates, a certain amount of periods. A 20 period moving average uh, is obviously fairly short term, 50 kind of medium, and 100 is gonna give me a, a longer term um, kind of price level as to what is, what is happening now versus in the past. Each moving average gives a moving average over a certain number of periods. So if you're using D, which is day, each candlestick represents a day. And so that is a 20, 50 and 100 day moving average. If you change the chart to 15 minutes, then this will be 20, 15 minute periods. Um, so it does change depending on the chart that you're using. But I can now see by these, uh, by these three moving averages exactly what the trade is now compared to the longer term trend. So what you can see here, the shorter term uh, period moving average, the 20 day moving down through the longer period moving averages. And what this tells me is that there's a short term sell off. This is kind of a bearish sign for sure. When the shorter term uh, price movement comes down, so you've got the candlestick physically moving through 
So that's one uh, kind of uh, flag. And then the actual moving average is moving down. That's the second flag. That means that that move has basically been confirmed. So this tells me everything I need to know. Where is the short term trade versus the longer term trade? Now, what a lot of people do, what a lot of traders do, is use the 100 period, 100 period moving average as a guide. If the price is below the 100 or 200 period moving average as a longer term trend, that would uh, be considered a kind of bearish market. Many people don't go long when this happens um, or, you know, they, they just monitor the situation. Um, also, when the actual price itself but dictated by candlesticks moves across these, then they may start trading again. So what you can see here is a big sell off. You know, you would you would have been good not to buy when this was happening, when the chart was moving through these. But as you can see, we've met some support right here. The price is starting to move through the short term moving average again. This is a potentially bullish sign because um, the moving average is, is the, the candlestick is moving above the moving average telling us that maybe the short term trend, downtrend, is starting to reverse and moving up. So you can uh, glean a lot of information from three moving averages where the short term trend and trade is versus longer term trends. The next thing I like to do with TA is find what I call areas of value. You can call these trend lines if you like. I prefer areas because it gives me um, a real life box and an area where the trade might go. Trend lines are great, but they're very specific and re the real world isn't like that. What I'm gonna do is come and draw these on. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle right here. And what I mean by areas of value is a price level where the trade has consolidated at. These areas where the trade consolidates are considered very strong signals for the price. So the first one I'm gonna draw is right here. That is certainly an area of value for me. Um, so I'm gonna click that right here. And what you can do is change um, the style of these if you want. So you can come up to settings, um, just change maybe to green like this, um, make a bit thicker. So that's fine by me. Um, so is there any other area of value? For, for sure there is. So I'm gonna copy that box um, and then I'm gonna put an area of value probably um, around here. This is an area of value. Um, copy it, paste again, and then come and have that same area value here. Why have I uh, put the area value here? You can see a lot of trade around here. There were there were one, two, three, four, five, six, probably ten days of trade around this level. So that's obviously a key level. Now you have support and resistance. This up here was uh, resistance because the price was moving up, and then when the price was coming back down, this is support right here, and it happens to be around the same price. That tells me that this price is a significant price to trade around. Now that the price is moving through the shorter period moving average, potentially to the upside, not confirmed yet, I would therefore consider um, a move if I was gonna go bullish, to this level once again. And it just so happens that the other moving averages seem to be converging converging around this area of value as well. So if I was confident the price was going to continue in this uptrend, I would be entering a trade around this level with a take profit of around up here. These are areas of value. And another area of value for certain would be this level here because there's a ton of consolidation around. And that just so happens if you look previously to be an area of resistance twice up here and that has turned into support here. These are areas of value. I can see these very easily after more than a decade of trading, but they really will help you out to find price levels when you're trading to enter some take profit levels and some stop losses um, when you enter your trades. When you are trading either short term or longer term, if you just want to accumulate, using limit orders is absolutely vital. If you're using a convert feature, a simple feature to, you know, dollar cost average into crypto, that's great. But you can get much better trades and deals when you use limit orders. I'm going to come to you actually trading right here. You can see I'm in the Bybit spot market. Um, and the order price right here, the order, the the price in the market right now is 48,500. So maybe I wanna, yeah, put a, a limit order in at 48,456. Um, and then I can just put in uh, an amount. Let's say I wanna buy yeah, th this much Bitcoin. I have a limit price of 48,456. Press buy, just confirm that. Now what you'll see is that down here, I've entered a limit order. I am not going to trade unless the price comes down and meets uh, my bid. 
So what that means is that I'm gonna try and get some cheaper Bitcoin because the price is always fluctuating. I don't just wanna go in um, and pay up for my Bitcoin. Now, where would that limit order come in? Well, come to the chart, as you can see here, and find some levels. I would say within a day, in fact, even just today, the price has come down to 48,100 and it's now around uh, 485 that's a big difference when you're trading over the long term. So look at the candlestick for your day, see where it's moving and put some limit orders in and see if you get hit. It is going to save you maybe half a percent, one or 2% over the long term, which you know, if you're accumulating big bags is actually gonna be a big difference. So that limit order is down there working for me. I can just cancel this at any time if I don't wanna trade. The next indicator that I wanna show you is called ATR. It's little used amongst uh, a lot of people, but I think it's one of the best ways to uh, see how much risk you're getting in when you trade, um, either on a daily basis or just to put some, some uh, stop losses in to really mitigate your risk if you're short-term trading. So I'm gonna come to indicators uh, and I'm gonna type in ATR. It's known as average true range. I'm gonna click that on and you can see that's on the chart now. Average true range is a great indicator. It gives us a flat amount in dollars that the price can move. So average true range tells me the one period, so I'm on a day chart right here, so it's gonna give me the one day maximum move possible for the asset that I'm trading. I'm trading Bitcoin and it is telling me that today, based on previous moves, and we can see that there's been a ton of consolidation here. So the volatility of Bitcoin is coming down and being compressed. And you can see the ATR is also coming down and being and being compressed. When you had this big sell off here, high volatility, big move, the ATR spikes. The ATR is telling me what is the largest probable one day move, because I'm on the day chart, for Bitcoin. And it's telling me that the largest probable one day move because of the recent price action is around $2,567. So when you're entering a trade, let's say you want a short-term trade and you want to go in and you want to set your stop loss, um, you can set this price, this stop loss, anywhere you want, but the biggest amount you may probably lose is around $2,500. So if you're in you know, around 48,000, set your stop loss just underneath with the ATR. The ATR is going to help you if the ATR is telling you that um, it may move five or 6,000 in a day, factor that into your trading as well. It's a really great indicator to show you um, actually how much risk you're taking because of the probable move of the asset that you're trading. So next I wanna talk about getting your news sources in place and your feed set up because if you are day trading, you require a news feed, it's absolutely vital. So we're gonna get into that. Before that, I do wanna plug my crypto course right here. If you're getting value out of this video, then this type of value is really given to you 100 times over in my crypto course. Um, so when you get into the crypto course, it is a one-time purchase, and then you get lifetime access to all future content for free. So um, content is added over time for existing members. We have private Discord groups with many different uh, groups for technical analysis, for investing, for doing research. So if you, you, know, you wanna get value out of crypto, you wanna know how to trade, how to research, how to look at tokenomics, how to um, day trade and everything like that is all in here. There's over 100 videos already, uh, more are added over time for free for existing users. You can go to moneycg.academy or I will link that um, in the description as well so you can have a look. Um, there's a ton of value in there. Um, so really I wanna talk about getting your news in place and your feed in place. Uh, Twitter is without a doubt the best for this. So you can follow who you want. Um, you know, you might wanna follow me or you, you might wanna follow other people, but I would suggest looking at the people that I follow. So, you know, go to my Twitter and see who I'm following um, because I'm following some people that I get value from as well. There is no way that you are going to know everything about the market, it's impossible, but following the right people is going to give you not just information, but also analysis as well that you can use, compare, contrast, and make your own decisions. One of the easy ones is looking at the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index. Um, it's a little bit silly, yes. I mean, like this is, you know, um, qualitative really, but it gives you a, an idea. And you can actually feel fear and greed on Twitter, on crypto Twitter. You can feel it, it's palpable. I like to trade and buy when everyone is like selling and capitulating. That's where I go to work. Um, so you can have a look at this. This is a very rough guide. Follow if someone like Will on Twitter, this is a group of people that post 
um, tons of info about on-chain analysis, really good um, analysis of that on-chain data. So you don't have to go and look at the data yourself. You can just follow someone like this and get a lot of great um, analysis of that data all in one go. So for sure, following people on Twitter, getting your news in the right place. So I've recently been trading Polygon. Um, so what you have to do, you know, just go and follow, Poly go follow Polygon, Polygon Daily, as you can see, Polygon, the official site. Um, there's a lot of different people that are going to be posting tons of very specific information that you can trade from. And the market in general, you just cannot get this information from a price. You know, why is the price going up? You actually need to know why. You need to follow these people because then uh, you will get kind of early information about things that are happening. Is the project going to be launching somewhere? Is a ton of uh, um, total value locked going to be coming onto the system? Is you know the coin going to be listed on an exchange? All of these things are catalysts for the price, and you just won't know them unless you're following um, specifically a lot of the best um, accounts for that specific project. So this is absolutely vital. Whatever you want to trade, um, get your Twitter in place. It is the best place to get this. If you want to trade altcoins, then go to the specific um, project Twitters. Uh, and there all, are also a lot of other kind of independent people that post about different projects. If you want to trade Bitcoin, then really this is more about macro news um, and, you know, kind of interest rates and everything like that. But whatever you're trading, you absolutely have to get your Twitter and your news flow in place. The next thing you'll need to do is really understand where the trade is. Looking at the price isn't enough. We've looked at the price, we've looked at areas of value, but what we want to do now is get some fundamental data about what people are trading, where and why. One of the best ways to do this is to look at futures funding. Futures funding is going to tell you everything about where the market is right now. You can feel it. And this is very important when you trade because what you really want to do, especially when day trading, which is what this um, video is about, is um, make sure you time your entries properly. Now, what I can see here, and this is called Coin Glass. Um, so you can come to this website, it's totally free. And I'm looking at perpetual futures funding rates for Bitcoin. There's also a ton of other altcoins here that you can use. Perpetual funding rates tell me where the market is. I can really feel it, right? So what you can see here is that there are longs and there are shorts. This is telling me now that there are more people with open interest to the short side, you can see 51%, than to the long side. So the market is kind of short and they're betting short. Now for me, what, that's, what that tells me is, well, do I want to go long or do I want to go short here? What you can do is come back to the chart and really see what's happening with the price. So I can see that actually the price is consolidating around here. Um, I can also see um, that we're just kind of moving up. Were people covering their shorts? Were they short and then they're going long to kind of cover and, and exit out of their trades? If the market, and you can use this along with... Um, analysis from people like Will, um, who do you know on-chain analysis, when the market starts to turn, that's when you want to kind of uh, time your trade. So when this market uh, starts kind of not going short, going long again, that's when you want to time your trade to get in because you're going to be riding people's short covering. When the market flips, it flips pretty quickly, especially with cryptocurrencies. So when the price is coming down, okay, leave off, maybe you wanna go short itself. But when the price starts consolidating and moving back up again, that's when you, can, when you can say, okay, I'm gonna try and time my entry right here. This tells me where the market is. And usually what you wanna do is, um, you know, wait for the market to start turning and then riding that move back up. So futures funding is really good. The other thing that you can look at is KuCoin right here, KuCoin funding rates. They are a great indicator to where the market is right now. So essentially on KuCoin, you know, it's, they have a funding market for their futures exchange. When the, um, when the funding rate is around about 5% for US dollars or USDT, that means that there aren't many traders going long, right? Usually that means there's been a sell-off and, and a pullback, which is exactly what happened. That is when I come alive and I start buying um, DCA, dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. Um, that is when the market is soft and selling off and everyone's selling. That's great for me. I'm long-term, I'm gonna hold for you know 20 years. So I'm happy to kind of buy during those periods. But what you can see, the market is starting to turn on KuCoin right now. 
the rate came down to about four and a half percent and now you can see it's just ticking up again and that means people are starting not to go short they're starting to um, go long again so use this when this starts ticking up and this starts ticking up that is a sign that the market may be starting to turn around and go long again. You can come back to the chart, look at your areas of value, can see it starting to happen as well, right? So this is a potential long entry trade if we get another couple of good prints to start moving up and then you've got your take profits higher. The next thing I wanna to touch on is the difference between spot trading and futures trading. If you want to day trade, Futures are much more suited for day trading. Spot market really is for you know buy and hold, maybe swing trading if you wanna do that um, over a slightly longer period. Day trading, or you know, if you want a position that's open for a week or so, futures really are more suited to this. But a massive risk warning, you know, if you're an, uh, a beginner, maybe just stick to the, st uh, the, the spot market. Um, it is safer because there's no leverage being used. You, you're not gonna get um, kind of stopped out. And you know, if you get in the wrong side of a trade, at least you can just hold the trade and, and kind of wait. Um, with futures, that's not how it works. So what I really wanna do is go over to the futures market. Um, this is definitely for more advanced traders that have been in for a while, but I just wanna really show you the difference right here. So with futures, you do not buy and own any of the asset that you're trading. You are just simply betting on the price difference between when you enter the trade and when you exit the trade. So if you do want to use futures, and many people do, there's an advantage of lower trading fees, and also you have the ability to go long and short. You can't do that in the spot market. You can sell Bitcoin or Ethereum that you have, but you can't take a short position. You can do that with futures. So what you're doing essentially is betting on prices up and down. Um, so that is the benefit of futures. Also with futures, you can leverage up. Um, and I've got specific trading guides uh, for Bybit and other uh, platforms. So I'll leave them linked in the description on how to trade futures, you can do that. But with futures, you can leverage up. So you can put $1,000 in account, go 2X leverage and open a position that is worth $2,000. The reason why people do this is because you can take advantage of much smaller price movements. So as long as you have your risk management in place, you know, you can take advantage of a two to 5% move, you know, and that obviously with two times leverage works out a lot more. Um, so that is really the benefit of futures. They, there are, they are beneficial, but there are also risks. So what I'm going to do here is really Quickly show you, um, let's say you wanna go long here, so you are a buyer, you put in a limit order um, at this price, you know, and you put in whatever. You need to uh, you know, go with take profits and stop losses. When trading futures, you have to have a stop loss in place because if something goes south, you're in big trouble. You could lose you know, all of, especially if you're using five times or 10 times leverage, you know, a 10% 10, 10 move is going to wreck your account. So. Always when trading futures, put in a stop loss at a certain level. And we've seen that with areas of value earlier on in this video. A stop loss would be, for example, five or 10% away from your entry price. And you can see that here. That will, when you enter the order, that will enter a secondary order, which is a sell order below your entry to stop any further losses if the trade moves against you. Futures have their advantages. They're also much more risky because you can leverage up. You don't have to leverage, you can use one-time leverage, but with futures, um, there's certain things to consider and a stop loss would always be recommended. The next tip, and this is the most important one for sure, is to have a plan and stick to that plan. And don't try and project something onto a chart and an asset that you just want to happen. This is the most difficult thing being patient, um, understanding where the chart is, what the asset is telling you, and then choosing whether or not to trade rather than saying, I want to make $100 a day and so I'm gonna go in, make a bad decision because you personally want to earn $100 a day rather than being objective and saying, is this actually a good trade or not? I'm gonna give you an example of this right now as I'm making this video. Terra Luna has been on an absolute tear. It's come into the top 10, it's up 42%. Um, and a lot of people are kind of FOMOing, right? They're thinking, oh, this thing keeps going up and I can't get in. Um, it's a great asset. So what should we do here? So if I want to go long and I wanna make money from Terra, firstly, that's the wrong thing because whatever you want is not where you should start your trading journey. So I'm gonna come over to the Bybit chart right here. And remember everything I've said in this video, finding areas of value and everything like that. So you can see on the chart, we have a 20 and a 50. Bybit have only just added this, so the 100 isn't there. 
What can you see from this chart? Where is the area of value? Do I want to go long here in anticipation of it going up to 100? What I can see is an incredibly bearish candlestick here. So the price got up to 98 and then obviously some big sellers came in and just sold it off. Where is the area of value on this chart? Should I get in here? To be honest, no. Uh, let's look at the area of value. So I'm just gonna draw um, a rectangle right here. I can see the previous area of value um, is right up here around 70. Let's draw this on. This is where I would be looking to get in. Um, you can see that the blue moving average is obviously converging and kind of coming up to this level as well. This may be support. Is Luna gonna get here? Is it gonna consolidate up here? I don't know, but right now would be a kind of a bad time to get in because we're neither at support or breaking through resistance. And so for me, even though I like Luna and want to add some more, I'm gonna have to hold off for this trade. I don't want to be right in the middle where it could go either down to this level, you know, or potentially up. I just don't know. You can't predict the future. You have to trade from levels. So I can't project my own wants and needs to earn money um, against the chart that is telling me that it's just not the right time to buy. So you have to look at the chart and what, what it's telling you. I actually much prefer the Bitcoin chart here. If you're looking at levels, of support and resistance. You can see we have a, a period of consolidation. The price is attempting to move up through uh, previous resistance moving averages, and we have um, another area that potentially the price could move to. That would be um, a trade that actually has a better risk reward ratio for me than trading in Luna, which has been uh, mooned and then is potentially coming back to support way lower. So do not project what you want to happen onto a chart. You have to objectively look at the chart and decide whether uh, the trade is actually a good risk reward or not. So that is the very basics of setting up trading, looking at news and flow and charts to try and make some better decisions on what you wanna trade. For sure, if you wanna know way more in depth for this and you wanna know specifically how to enter orders, how to do technical analysis, I have a whole section in my course on trading. You can see it here, there's tons of videos, more added over time. Do check that out if you are looking um, just for an all-in-one crypto trading and investing solution that will be added to for free over time, a one-time payment, Discord groups and everything like that. Also, if you wanna trade on Bybit, um, there are deposit bonuses on there as well. Um, and you can look in the description for you know the platform I use some extra helpful videos and everything like that. I'm James with Money's UG. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.